Yeah, that's true. Right. But you guys don't have to call me Mr. Ford. My name is actually Justin. Justin? Yeah, Justin oh, Ford. Justin. And uh, I'm here to talk to you guys today. And I was just down in Miss somebody's class. I don't remember because she wasn't there. It was a substitute teacher. But I'm a motivational speaker, and I actually speak to young people all over the city, all over the area. Okay? Who's the youngest in this classroom? Raise your hand. Youngest? Right in the court, bro. Put your hand out. You're the oldest. No, you said that. You're good. Thank you. Because you'll be standing there for like a whole hour and your legs will start getting tired and all that. Youngest? How old are you? 13. 13? I'm 14. You know he is mine. And he's the big. Alright, so who's 13? <laughs> who's 13 in the class? Raise your hand. 14. Raise your hand. 15? Anybody 16? No, I'm not Nobody's 16? Okay. Is this all ninth grade? Yes. yes. Alright, great. If I could have everybody's attention while I'm talking because I'm only here until 10.15, but I take what I'm about to talk to you guys very serious. Okay, very serious. Why? Because I have a story that I'm going to share with you. A story that I was just, I was just in your shoes like it was yesterday, but it really wasn't yesterday. I just was some time ago. But I was just like you, young and in high school, thinking I knew it all, had it all together, knew what I was doing, knew where I was going, and all of a sudden I had a wake-up call. Okay? How many of you guys, how many of you guys, how how do you guys think I am? You look like 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. I don't think nobody said I'm 30. I said 29. Okay, but nobody said 30. I said 30. Okay, you said 31, 34, 29, but that's not 30. That's not close. It's not 30. Right? But the reason I say that, guys, is look, I'm 30 years old. When I was your age, you guys were just in diapers. Some of you guys weren't even born. And can I tell you guys something? It was like it was yesterday. Okay? It was like it was yesterday. And the story that I'm going to share with you guys is this. The same thing that you guys are struggling with and going through today is the exact same things that I was struggling with and going through 15 years ago. It's really no different. Yeah, some things may have changed just a little bit, but the ultimate, uh, ultimate temptation, struggle, peer pressure, hardship that you guys are facing today was the exact same stuff I was facing. I'm lucky to be alive. Honestly, I count it a privilege and an honor to be standing before you because I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. Because when I was your age, I thought I knew it all. Okay, I thought I knew it all. Got into ninth grade, but you guys are all in ninth grade. Okay, you step up into high school. You're now almost going to be a 10th grader. And then once I became a 10th grader and then an 11th grader is where it kind of started to sink. Why? Because as you get older, you start getting exposed to a lot more stuff. Okay? And the stuff that you get exposed to and the decisions that you make could ultimately jeopardize your life. How many of you guys know somebody that has lost their life at a young age? Raise your hand. Right? And how many of you guys know that once the casket closes and the casket is lowered into the ground and they throw the dirt up on top of you, you're not coming back? How many of you guys want to die young? Raise your hand. Right. Absolutely. Not one person would want to die young. Okay? But you guys right now, especially young men, I want you to hear me today because I take this very serious. Some of you guys may be making decisions today. And they may not even be big decisions, but those little baby decisions that you're making today could ultimately lead up to some dirt being thrown on you in the ground. Because in a few minutes, I'm going to read some statistics to you that say it is so. That say it is so. I'll, I'll start with one. I'll start with one statistic, and I'll read the rest in a minute. Where is it at? It says, this, this came out last month, young black men are nearly six times more likely to die from homicide than young white men. It says that 88 out of every 100,000 young black men have been killed to homicide. And it's literally more likely for a young black man to die of murder than it is for a disease, a car accident, or any natural death. That's why I want your attention, and that's why I take this really serious. Why? Because what this talks about is some of you guys are some statistics, but you don't have to become a statistic. Not one of you guys just raised your hand and said you want to die young, but statistics say that it's more likely for you, young man, to die of a murder, young, than it is to just die regular. 
or to die naturally. And that should, that should make you guys really think about what's really going on. How many of you guys are sick and tired of seeing things the way they are in the city? Raise your hand. Sick and tired of the murder, sick and tired of the crime, sick and tired of the fighting, sick and tired of all the nonsense, right? But guess what, guys? It's your generation that needs to rise up and do something about it. It's your generation that needs to make a stand and make a change today. Because too many young people are dying, too many young people are going to jail, too many young people are catching diseases, too many young people are dropping out of high school, wasting their life away. And how many lives do you guys get? One. One. And what you do today matters tomorrow. And this is so for real, guys, because every one of you guys were created with greatness inside of you. Every single one of you guys. Every single one of you guys were created for a purpose. To make a difference in this world. Every single one of you guys. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your family situation is right now. It doesn't matter how things are at right now at home. That you can overcome the obstacles and the things that you're facing today and rise up and become all that you were created to be. How many of you guys have a dream, a goal, or a vision? Okay? Some type of dream, goal, or vision, right? But guess what, guys? Without a game plan in place to help you with your dream, goal, or a vision, it's just going to be a dream, goal, or a vision. <clears throat> and I challenge young people. I go into schools. I've been doing a lot of work in Mumford High School. Working, I'm, I'm going into every classroom in the whole school. Why? Because I want to see young people rise up. I want to see young people take a stand. I want to see young people change and shift the tide of what's taking place in this city. You don't have to become a statistic. You don't have to fall subject to what everybody else is, is falling subject to. And it starts today and it starts with you. So I'm going to share my story. I'm going to share these statistics and then I'm going to put a challenge on the table. Because I, I want to see how serious you really are. That you young people are about your future. I want to see how serious you are about wanting to see things change. I want to see how serious you are about making a difference and becoming all you were created to be. So like I said, I'm 30 years old, I'm married, I have four kids, just had a baby two weeks ago, I was supposed to come in last week, but because uh, we just had the baby, I had to be home with my wife. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, and I'm living my dream right now. There's so many more things to come, but guess what guys? I shouldn't have made it past 19 years old. I dropped out of high school, I was an honor roll student, got all A's and B's, played football, I didn't graduate high school, okay? There were some things that I did become a statistic in. I dropped out of high school. Why? Because I wanted to run the streets. I wanted to live the fast life. I wanted to be what I saw on TV. I wanted to be what I saw in, in the media. I wanted to be what I heard in the music, just like a lot of young people today. Music is one of the biggest influencers on young people today. One of the biggest. Media is one of the biggest influencers on young people today. Okay. And if you get sucked into it, you may find yourself totally off track. Totally off track on what your goal, your dream, or your vision really is. My goal at that time was to become an attorney. I wanted to go to college, become an attorney, make a lot of money, live the good life, right? My grandfather was an attorney. And he told me, he said, son, all you got to do is graduate high school, go to college, graduate college, and stay out of trouble. Okay? He said, go to, graduate high school, go to college, stay out of trouble. So what did I do? I dropped out of high school, didn't go to college, and I got into trouble. So I had an opportunity that was going to be handed to me on a platter. How many of you guys think it would be pretty sweet if a family member of yours just said, here, I'll give you my law firm, right? Making six figures, driving a nice car, you know, having a good career. But see, I was young. I thought I knew it all. I wasn't focused, so I started going out and making dumb decisions. Dropped out of high school, had a baby by the time I was 18. While my, my class was graduating high school, I was having a baby. By the time I was 19, I had caught eight misdemeanors and a felony. I'm a felon. Selling dope, running the streets, got caught. Overdosed, almost died, got into a drunk driving accident, almost lost my life. Okay? I've been there. And again, with what I'm talking about today, it has nothing to do with your color. It has nothing to do with what city you're from, because there's people dying in the suburbs just like there's people dying in the city. There's people using drugs in the suburbs just like they're using in the city. There's people dropping out of high school in the suburbs just like they're dropping out in the city, okay? I'll even show you guys. This was me 
you guys can just see it from there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that was me when I was 19 years old. Thinking I was hard, that I was the man. Nobody could tell me nothing. Selling dope. Thinking I was a G. Guess what, it don't matter. You, you can be a G and be white. It don't matter, <laughs> right? But, but guess, and I partied with Eminem. But guess what, guys? I was chasing this lifestyle that I thought I needed to live. Why? Because I heard it in the music. I wanted to be it. And by the time I was 19, I was laying on the hospital bed fighting for my life because I had overdosed and almost died. Sitting in the jail cell at 19 years old, looking like, what just happened? Eight misdemeanors in a felony. I've been in Oakland County Jail, Macomb County Jail, Kent County Jail, and Wayne County Jail. <laughs> Dang, all in County. Wayne County. 13, I've been arrested 13 times. Lost my license for 10 years, just got it back. For acting the fool. But guess what, guys? It didn't just start with that. It didn't just start with that. It started with a little bit of decisions. Like when I was 14, smoking my first joint. Drinking my first beer. And how many of you guys have heard the saying that marijuana is a gateway drug? If you've ever heard the saying, raise your hand. You may have heard it, you may have never said it, right? And guess what? I used to laugh at that. I'd say, not me, I'm just going to smoke weed. Just like some of you guys may be smoking weed right now. And say, not me, just a little bit of weed. And before I knew it, I was sniffing lines of coke, popping ecstasy pills, staying up five days straight, wilding out. And you know what? The funny thing is, the response that you just had by laughing, I was the same way. I was the same way. I thought it was funny before. Not me. There's no way. But guess what, guys? The decisions that you make are progressive. When you give in to stuff, guess what? It turns into other stuff. Doesn't mean that every person that smokes weed is going to do this, that, or the other. But guess what? My message is why even start smoking weed? Why even start drinking? Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean you got to do it. Let me ask you a question. Why do people start smoking weed? Anybody have the answer? Peer pressure. Peer pressure. To be cool, to fit in, because everybody else is doing it. And you know what, guys? I'm going to say it like this. There's too many followers and not enough leaders in this generation. You would rather do what everybody else is doing just because everybody else is doing it when you know what's right to stand up and do what's right. And that's why everything just continues to go down this path of destruction, and it's been like this for a long time. There's kids that I grew up with and went to high school with that are in the grave right now, dead. They've been murdered, they've overdosed, because of stupid decisions, you know, getting into accidents that are in jail. How many of you guys know somebody that's locked up right now? Raise your hand. Okay. This is reality, guys. This is reality. When I was 15 years old, you couldn't have told me. If, if somebody would have came into my classroom when I was 15 years old and told me that, or if somebody were to tell me that in, in just a short few years, you're going to be a felon, you're going to be in jail, you're going to overdose and almost die, you're going to get to a drunk driving accident and almost lose your life, I wouldn't have believed them. Because at that point, I thought I knew it all. And I want to challenge you guys today. I just want you to really start to think. Use the brain that you've been given. Why? Because a brain is a powerful thing. And thinking is what everything starts with. Everything starts with your thinking. Your thinking will trigger your emotions. Your thinking will trigger your emotions, which will trigger your actions. You first think it. And if you guys find yourself that you guys are doing certain things right now, or st struggling with certain things, or, or you know dealing with certain situations, guess what, guys? Really start to sit back and think, okay? And it's not even just drugs. It's, it's sex, too. Young people, you know, when I was young, I lost my virginity when I was 14 years old, okay? And I look now, even at 30, I look at like 20-year-olds as young. Like, they're, they're like young kids. I can't even believe when I was 14 years old that I was out there wilding out and making decisions, you know, that could have ultimately affected me or put me into a situation. And so many people are, are so quick to get out here and make decisions, not really thinking about what are the possible outcomes of that decision. And unfortunately, we deal with the, the, the outcome after we've made the decision. How many of you guys have ever made a decision, a bad decision that you wish you would have never made or you regret? Raise your hand. Something. It could be anything. Every person should be raising their hand because everybody's done something at some point that they wish they wouldn't have done. 
Well, guess what, guys? There are some decisions that you can make that you, you'll never be able to change. That can ultimately, you know, rock your world and affect you from becoming what you want to be. Okay? I asked you guys, how many of you guys had a dream, goal, or a vision? Every one of you raised your hand. Well, guess what? There's certain decisions that you can make that will jeopardize that and cause you not to be able to fulfill it. Even though I've got my, my life together, even though I'm doing good, I can't become an attorney. Why? Because I have a felony on my record. So even though I've turned my life around and I'm doing good for myself, there's some things that I still can't do. Even though I've turned my life around. Even though I turned my life around at 19 years old and I made a decision. After hitting rock bottom and being on the ground like when there was no way other than up, I lost my license for 10 years. Five years they took it, five years I had a restricted license. You know what? And even though I turned my life around and I wasn't drinking anymore, I still lost my license. Even though I dropped out of high school and got my GED, I could never go back and wear my cap and gown and experience graduation. And that bothered me for a long time. It bothered me for a long time. Why? Because I can never say I graduated high school. No matter how successful I become, no matter how much money I make, I can never say I graduated high school. And that's like one of the monumental things in life is to be able to graduate, and I can never experience it. In some of these statistics, any time that I'm uh, preparing for uh, a speaking engagement, I prepare for the crowd that I'm speaking to. So if it's a predominantly white school, I research white statistics. If it's a predominantly black school, I research black statistics. But again, <coughs> color means nothing, but I want to be able to speak truth to who I'm speaking to. So I went and I studied statistics. Okay, And I want you guys to hear this. Because these are real statistics that are on paper right now. Right now. Okay? 54% of African Americans, only 54% graduate from high school, just 54. So that means if I separated the entire classroom, only half of you guys would graduate. Only half. In 2007, okay, which was just, you know, five, six years ago, nearly 6.2 million, that's a big number, 6.2 million young African American people dropped out of high school in one year. 6.2 million. And that was in 07, and statistics are getting worse. 6.2, guys. 6.2 million. And you know what? That's nonsense. That's nonsense. And that's why I come into schools, and that's why I challenge young people. Why? Because I don't want to see young people become a statistic. I don't want to see young people not become all they were created to be. Why? Because you're the generation. You're our next generation. I'm 30 years old. When you guys are my age, I'll be 45. And unless you guys do something about it, unless you guys change things, guess what? It's only going to continue to get worse. But you guys have the ability to do something about it. And it all starts with what you do today in Ms. McCoy's class. It's what you do on a daily basis. Every day. Every day matters. There's never a day that you don't live that doesn't matter. Some days may be more exciting than others, but every day counts. Why? Because every day plays into the next day. And guess what? When the clock strikes 12 a.m. tonight, this day can never be repeated. It can never be repeated. The majority of the 2.3 million people incarcerated right now in U.S. prisons and jails are African Americans. Nearly half. It's crazy. And these statistics should speak to you guys. Even though you're in ninth grade, 15, 14, 16, whatever it is, you guys need to think about this stuff. Because if you guys don't really think about it and do something about it by the decisions that you make, you may find yourself becoming one of those statistics like me. From 16 to 19 is when all that stuff went downhill for me. And you would have never been able to tell me when I was in 10th grade, I was on the high school football team. I was doing good. But all it, made, all it took was just a few bad decisions and boom, three years later, I'm sitting in a jail cell, not knowing where my life is going. Sitting in a drunk driving accident, looking at my mom's car smashed onto the wall on the freeway, not even knowing how I made it out alive. Because I wanted to be cool, I wanted to have fun, I wanted to smoke weed, I wanted to drink, I wanted to hang out, I wanted to do what young people were doing. But you don't have to do it. 
You don't have to make those decisions. How many of you guys right now come from a broken home, which means mom and dad both are not living in the home right now? Raise your hand. You only have one parent that you're living with. I need to see, raise your hand high just so I can see. Okay, just one parent you're living with, grandma, auntie, uncle, something, right? Okay, and you know what guys? I wanna tell you this, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. My parents divorced when I was two years old. So I know, I came from a broken home. I've been through multiple divorces. I know how it is and it wasn't my fault. But guess what they say? That when young people are in a broken home, which means one or the other parent isn't there. The statistics for the things that I'm talking about are so much higher. 63% of young people that commit suicide are from a fatherless home. 90% of all homeless and runaway children are from a fatherless home. 85% of all children who show behavior disorders come from a fatherless home. 71% of all high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. 80% of rapists with anger problems come from fatherless homes. And fatherless children are twice as likely to drop out of school. But you know what, guys? Most of you, how many of you guys that raised your hand that are just in one home? It's daddy that's missing. Raise your hand. Daddy's not there. Right? Okay, but watch this. You know what, guys? You know what? It's not your fault. And here's the reality. What did your daddy do? Just, just what, 15, 16 years ago? He was out running around, acting the fool, got with your mama, got her pregnant, and bounced most of the time. Or doesn't want nothing to do with you guys, okay? Maybe, maybe it's different, maybe you have your dad, maybe you see him. But watch this though, how does that make you feel ultimately? I want you to think for a second. How does it make you feel that you don't know your dad? How does it make you feel that he's not there? What? Right. And you know what, though? You don't have to become one of these statistics. And I know it hurts. Deep down within, see, you've learned as a young person to, to, to suppress that and push it way down. And you may not realize why you act out, why you have behavior issues, why you have anger issues, why you're insecure, why you're trying to find, you know, attention from other people, okay? The reason I went out and acted the fool and ran the streets and tried to become the man and, 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 and find my worth and chasing girls and doing all this stuff is because I didn't have somebody at home telling me that I was a champion. I didn't have somebody at home patting on my back telling me, you know what I'm saying, that, that, that I, was, I had a worth. And the reason I get choked up about it is because I know how you feel. I know what you guys are going through. And it caused me to go out and step out and act the fool and it almost took my life. And you're just one classroom of many classrooms across this whole entire country who are dealing with the same thing you're dealing with. And that's why young people are going through so much right now and having such a hard time and struggling. And you can't change that. There's certain things that you can't change. But what you can change is the outcome of your future. You don't have to be like your daddy. You don't have to be like your mom. You don't have to be like what you see at home or in your neighborhood. But what are you going to do about it? What are you doing today to become different, to do things different? Don't just come into this classroom or come to school on a daily basis because you have to and act like it don't mean nothing. This is your future. What you do as a ninth grader when this woman gives you an assignment, when this man right here tells you guys something, it's for a reason. It's not just because they want to. It's, it's because they know. They know what you need to do to become successful. How can you go to college if you can't graduate high school? How can you fulfill a dream, a goal, or a vision, open a business, become that producer, basketball player, whatever, if you're not even willing to give 100? What makes LeBron James an MVP year in and year out? What makes him so sweet? It's not that he's a ball hog. LeBron James, when he was your age, was already getting scouted by NBA play or the NBA teams. You want to know what separates LeBron James from a lot of people? Is when he was a young kid, he envisioned himself already as an MVP. Whoever, who, who's your player? Who's your favorite player? Kobe? Okay, Car Carmelo's sweet too. But what makes Carmelo as sweet as he is? 
help. Either way, everybody this has their opinion. This discussion, sweetheart. But I, I'm giving you an example. These guys, or even successful people in general, seen themselves successful and daily took, took steps leading up to that. Okay? Life is hard, guys. It's not easy. It's not easy to come to school on a daily basis and do good. It's not easy to go to college and graduate. It's not easy to open a business and be successful. But if I asked you guys, how many of you guys want to be successful in life? Raise your hand. Every one of you. Every one of you. Right? But guess what, guys? Why are so many people not successful versus the people that are successful? It's because it takes hard work. On a daily basis, it takes hard work. And what is success? It's just becoming what, what you want to become. Becoming a teacher, becoming a sergeant, becoming a basketball player, becoming whatever you want to be. And a lot, of, a lot of times, I got a daughter, she's going to be 13 this year. She wants to take the easy way, always. Cutting corners, what's the easy way? I'm looking for the easiest way to do this. And she's smart. My daughter, if she wanted to, she already got all A's one time this year. She could get all A's every single report card. But she would rather hang out and talk and worry about being a young person than she would be her future. She wants to go to U of M. She wants to live in a nice house, have money. But I'm like, hello, you're 12 years old and what you do today matters. If you don't start thinking right now and taking steps, you're building habits right now as a 12-year-old. Okay? You're building habits today that are going to lead into your tomorrow. You don't just arrive one day at success. You take daily steps and make daily decisions towards your success. And maybe you guys have never been challenged because maybe you guys don't hear this stuff at home. Maybe you don't have you know, somebody at home that's encouraging you, patting you on the back, telling you good job. So you go look for attention somewhere else. This is real. It happens every day. Why do people join gangs? Because they ain't got nobody to show them love, but they got some people to show them some love. Because all of us are looking for love and attention and affection. Each one of us were created that way. And you may not be getting it at home. You may not be getting it from the people that you love, but I'm here to tell you that you don't have to go look for it in other places. Especially young ladies are so quick to jump in bed just because you got Romeo telling you what you want to hear, but Romeo's infecting you with some disease. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, I know people that have AIDS, okay? You don't know if that person you're about to give your body up to has AIDS. You don't know that, because if you did, you wouldn't do it, right? Who in their right mind would jump in bed with a female or a male if they knew they were with AIDS? I wouldn't. Okay, well then how do you know he doesn't? Is it worth taking the chance? Is it worth it? Do you, do you want to get pregnant, or do you want to get a girl pregnant? Because everybody's looking for the quick thrill, but once, the, once, once you find out the girl you just laid with is having a baby, what are you going to do now? Are you going to run? And, and, and I'm just saying it like this. Okay, some of you guys, daddy ran. Are you going to run on your kid? No, no. You say that now. You say it now. But here's, here, you guys want to hear the, 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 the answer to that? Just keep it in your pants. Seriously. I, I, can I talk real to you guys? Are you guys mature enough for me to talk no, to you? No, they're not. No. Yeah. Jason. Uh. It's okay, I get called Jason all the time. But I'm saying it like this. Guess what? The answer is don't do it. What's the answer to not getting caught up in doing drugs? Don't don't use drugs. What's the answer to not getting caught up into becoming an alcoholic or getting into a drug driving accident? Don't drink. Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean you gotta do it. Okay? Like I said, you're you're four years away from where I was. I'm a deathbed. How do you know that over the, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen the next day. And some of you guys may be hearing me right now, and some of you guys may not be hearing me, and this message may not be for you right now, but someday you may be faced with some of these things. And I really want you guys to remember the one man in the three piece, okay? Remember, remember me that I came in here, and I'm, I'm sharing my story with you. Because guess what? You may not be as lucky as me. You may not make it out alive. You may not make it out alive. And I can assure you guys, you only live once, right? What do they say, YOLO, right? So, so, so what is YOLO supposed to mean? You only live once, so act the fool? Or is it you only live once and, and give it your all? And become all that you were created to be, right? Because you guys can never, if you move on to the 10th grade after this, you can't repeat 9th grade again. So whatever your, your grades are, 
You can't, you can't go back and fix those. And if you, if you want to go to college like you said you do, but then guess what? You better be doing something about it today. And maybe up until today, you haven't really cared. Maybe up until today, you've just been just kind of floating along. Well, I challenge you today. Let today be a new day in your life. Let today be a new start. And again, it don't matter what you've done up until this point. It don't matter how things are at home. That you today can rise up and start to make the right choices. How many of you guys want to become a statistic as I read? How many of you guys want to become a dropout? A dope dealer? A prostitute? A statistic? Nobody. Right? Nobody. So I better not find out any one of you become one. So I'll come snatch you off the street and take you home. I'm serious. I tell young people all the time. I connect with young people all over the city. Don't let me hear about you dropping out of high school. Don't let me hear about you acting the fool in your class. Don't let me hear about you going out onto the streets and going to jail. Because every time somebody's life, like I said, gets thrown into jail, dies, it's a life lost. It's potential lost that can never really be returned. So I asked you guys about how many of you guys had a dream or a goal. You guys raised your hand. Can you help me out? This is a dream card. And a dream card is where you write your name and your dream down. And at the end of the class, I'm going to collect this, okay? I want you to write your name and your dream or your vision or your goal down. Because who has ever written your dream or your goal down before on paper? You've actually written it down before? All right, good. The reason why, does anybody know why it's so important to write a dream or your dream or your goal down on paper? It is, but what's the main reason why you write it down? So you can see it. So you can focus on it. So you know where you're going. Thank you, sir. So you know where you're going. <clears throat> and maybe you've never written your dream or your goal down, but today's the day to write it down. And there is no right or wrong dream. It's your dream. It's your goal. Write it down. And I always say this. You know, if your dream is to become the world's strongest man, but you're a peanut... <laughs> then you can strive for that, and that's okay, but if it doesn't work out, what's, what's, your, what's your plan B? What's your backup plan? If you want to be an NBA All-Star, but you don't Ladies even play... Ladies in the back! If you want to be an NBA All-Star, but you don't even play for the team, what's your backup plan if you don't arrive to the NBA? If you want to be the, the next, next and greatest rap artist or producer, and that doesn't work out, what's, what's your plan B? Always have a plan B, guys. Why? Because most people only have a plan A, and when it doesn't work out and they get all disappointed, they just give up. And when you just give up, that's when you just become a statistic because you just you, you exist and you just become whatever. And I really want you to think about that for a few minutes. And maybe you've never thought about your future. Well, today's the day to think about it. Today's the day. Maybe you maybe you you know never thought that you could become anything. Well, guess what? I'm here to say that's a lie. You can become whatever you want to be. So write that down. Does anybody not have a pen or a pencil? You don't have one, man? You don't have one? Okay. Is anything that I'm saying today making sense? Is anybody feeling what I'm saying? Is it... Is it speaking to you somehow or another? Again. Yeah. How many of you guys actually want to go to college? Raise your hand. You guys know what college you want to go to? Yeah. Did you just say MSU? Oh, my stomach hurts. <laughs> no, I'm a big Michigan fan. Ohio State. Who just said Ohio State? Oh my goodness. Are you really here in Detroit right now? You're in the wrong city. Yeah, wrong city. Michigan State. Does anybody want to go to Michigan? Okay. I want to go to Michigan State. I want to go to 
wrong with this state. That's what's wrong with it. <laughs> uh, 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 and I keep telling them that's why I got that back there. They not college ready. They not even trying. I want to go to Florida. Are those the days up there? Next. You can't, guys. You can't. You know that it's colleges. Just yeah. yeah. Do you know that colleges look at your ninth grade year? So how how have you done so far this ninth grade year? I because to get into MSU, you gotta have like a, a 3.0 grade point average. Y'all better listen. You got a 3.0? How are you gonna go to Michigan State, man? And and that's when? When? You gotta tell your teacher. Say now. But he's not. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. And you gonna bring him up? I'm gonna see something. Yep, you gonna see something. I'll bring him up. But right now, I'll be wasting my time. And, and, and honestly, don't. Hey, she's being real. She's the one that sees your papers every day, not me. And that's what your teacher's saying, guys. Look, whatever you have on your paper, it's going to take hard work. And you know what? Even though I dropped out of high school and I was able to get my GED, I've never gone to college. I was fortunate enough to make some new, new choices in life. But I can assure you guys, I can assure you guys that today matters. And when I leave and you go on to your third hour and you stay in here, I challenge you to sit down and actually listen and do your work. Take your homework home. I didn't like homework. I didn't do homework. I didn't study for the test, but guess what? I was lucky enough that even though I didn't study, I could still get good grades. I don't like homework. I don't like homework. I don't like studying, but I want a million dollars. I don't like homework. I don't like studying, but I want to go to MSU. If you don't like homework, buddy, you ain't going to MSU. You want to know why? Because that's all you do at college is homework. And you know what? You don't have mommy and daddy or even the teacher telling you. Why? Because you're paying money to go there. And if you're deciding you want to waste your money to go to school, they don't care. See ya. They don't even care if you show up or not. Seriously, they don't. I'm serious. So that's what I'm saying, guys. And where does it all start with the way you think? I don't like doing homework. Why don't you just start saying it? Even though you don't like it, start saying, I like homework. Let me hear you say it. I like homework. Come on, say it. I, I like, like homework. homework. I like that homework. I like doing my work. I love doing my work. Because honestly, guys, it's for you. It's for you. It doesn't matter what the person next to you says or does. It's, it's what are you doing? What are you doing? Nobody likes to do what's hard, but guess what? If hard work pays off, and you had to do some hard work for a handful of years to get the result that you were looking for, why don't you do it, right? Put in that work. Put in that work. How many of you guys are on uh, either Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or any of that? Raise your hand. YouTube. So I'm on YouTube. All right. Uh, I am on YouTube. All right, guys, this is called the contact card. When I go into classrooms and I speak, I don't want to just come in here, talk to you guys, share my story, and never hear from you again. I actually stay connected with young people through my Facebook, through my Twitter, through my YouTube, to where if you're ever going through something, okay, it's one thing when you guys are all in a group and everybody wants to be cool and not really, you know, be serious, but when you're all by yourself and you're going through things or it's yeah. tough at home, I created this phone number on this card, which is specifically for students, okay? Facebook, Twitter, if you're ever going through something, if you ever just need somebody to encourage you, pray for you, talk to you, you know, help you through what you're going through. Maybe it's not even a bad thing. You know, maybe you just want to stay connected. Guess what? I already had some people in the class that I was at last time follow me on Twitter. I followed them right, right back. And I stay connected with the, the kids that I talk to. Why? Because I care about you guys. I care about today's generation. I care about young people. Why? Because I want to see those young people become the statistics. I don't want to see young people that have the potential to do great things with their life wasted. And that's why I want to put it out there. Maybe you don't have somebody that you can connect with. Maybe you don't have somebody that you can talk to. Maybe you're going through something right now. Maybe it's not even anything that I talked about. Maybe it's something totally different. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're discouraged. Maybe you're a bully. Maybe you're being bold. Maybe you, uh, whatever it may be, guess what I'm here for. You guys can hit me up. 
this number you can text me. I've, I've had students text me just to let me know they were going through some things and just to encourage them, whatever it may be. And I want to stay connected with you guys. And I'm here for you. I want to hear about your success. I want to hear when you get your first A on your test. I want to hear that you're doing your homework. I'm serious. I'll be here. I'll be in your corner, man. I'll be championing you along. Like, good job. Seriously. Because we all need that. We all need it. We all love to hear good job when we do a good job. We all love to hear, you know, people, you know, give us a hand clap for doing something right. We all do. That's just, that's the way life is. But if you've never had somebody clapping, you know, clapping you on or cheering you on, guess what? I want to be your cheerleader. I'm serious. That's, that's what I'm all about is helping you ignite the champion within. I'm serious. I'm serious, bro. I'm serious. And again, it may not relate to you guys today. It may not make sense to you today, but please believe that one day, especially as you're getting older, you're going to be faced with a lot of these things. Do you have those? Do you want to start handing those out? I wasn't, not today, no. I wasn't asked to come back, but. Oh, in here? I got some right here. Okay, so if you just want to write their name. Just write up the top line. You want to pass them out to the kids? Yeah. You know, right? These are not here? I told you guys I was going to put a champion. There's a challenge on the table. It's called the Champion's Challenge, okay? I want you guys to hear this, okay? You said you don't want to be a statistic. You said you want to become all you were created to be. You said that you have a dream and a goal and you want to fulfill it. Well, I want to see how serious you are. So your teacher's passing you out a certificate right now. And I created this challenge to do what it says, to challenge young people. To challenge young people to see how serious you really are about your future. Because again, in this one hour that we've had together, you could say what you want to say, you could, you know, go along with the flow of what everybody else is saying, but you may be just doing that just because everybody else is saying they're doing it. So in just a few minutes, when she passes out all these certificates, we're actually going to do something together, and I'm going to challenge you guys, and then I'm going to go home. <laughs> I had to get up early this morning, because like I said, me and my wife, we just had a baby, he's two weeks. He loves to wake us up. It's okay. That's how it was. It's not spelled right? Those ones I gave you back, let me see if I have one more. There's one missing. Who, who, what's the name? Um, Gordon. It was on the, uh, no? It's not spelled right? That's how it was on the uh, ship that Tracy gave me. That's how it came from the counseling center. What, which one are you looking for? What's the last one? I'm going to college in Las Vegas. I'm going to Georgia. 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 All right, guys, listen up. Does anybody not have a certificate? All right, so listen. Listen up. Okay? Again, this is called the Champions Challenge. And if you're serious about not becoming a statistic, if you're serious about your future, if you're really serious about your dream and your goal that you wrote down, and you're, and you're not just saying it, okay? Because if you're not serious, I don't want you to stand. Keep your certificate out. Don't put it away. Because we're not done yet. If you're serious about your future and everything that we talked about today, I want you to stand up right now with the certificate in your hand. Stand up. Oh. 
And if you're not, you can stay seated and that's your choice. That's your choice. You got this first one. Yeah. 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 Other than Avery, this is my second one. Just going in six times. Get up, boy! Just going right. I mean, I, no, I, well, what I said was, just going right. Stay seated. Oh, you're not serious? Sit back down. I'm sorry. Flip it up. So watch this, guys. So on the count of three, guys, I have a little creed that I wrote here. We're gonna we're gonna say this creed together, and we're gonna say it out loud. And I want you guys to know this: that you're making a declaration for your future and for your life. It's not about the person next to you. It's not about your friends. Stand up, please. Don't sit on the desk. It's about you. This is about you. Your future. Okay. So on the count of three, I want you guys to say it like you mean it, and say it because it's it's for you, okay? So on the count of three, one, two, three. I am a champion. I am not a statistic. I am a champion. I will use wisdom in my decision making. I am a champion. I will not be influenced to make bad decisions. I am a champion. I am a leader and will hold my fellow champions accountable. I am a champion and will choose to be different. I make a declaration today that I will no longer be limited by my circumstances. I choose to be a champion for my generation and generations to come. Give yourselves a hand. Now the only way to finalize this challenge is to actually sign where your name is at the bottom and accept the challenge. Okay? And when you're signing it, acknowledge to yourself. And, 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 yeah, don't use a pencil. You know what you, you, you said about putting it in the frame? You guys can take this home, put it. You can put it in your locker, put it on your wall. I go to Mumford a lot. Mumford, I got kids at Mumford who said they put it in a frame and put it on their wall in their bedroom, put it on their, their fireplace. And you know what? Look at this on a regular basis. And when you guys see this certificate, I want you to remember it today. I want you to remember the conversation that we had. And I want you to remember that the dream or the goal that you wrote down. I want you to remember that you raised your hand that you wanted to be successful. I'm going to, yeah. I, wanted you, I want you to remember that you raised your hand that you didn't want to become a statistic. And guess what? Listen up. If you find yourself slipping and you find yourself starting to go down that path, maybe you're afraid to talk to Mrs. McCoy or the sergeant. Maybe you're afraid to talk to your parents or whoever's in your life. Shoot me a text. Inbox me on Facebook. Let me know what's going on. And whatever I can do to help you out, I will. Don't think that you're alone. And don't continue to go down a path if you find yourself slipping that's ultimately going to lead you into a, a place you really don't want to be. So take these with you. Okay? Take them with you. And let these remind you of, of today. We're going to do two more things and then 1015 will be here. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? I knew you had one question. Uh, he wants to know what my career is. I'm a speaker. I own multiple businesses. Me and my wife are getting ready to open a restaurant. Um, we've got a lot of different things that we're doing. Probably about four or five different businesses. Yes, sir. What's your restaurant? Uh, it's going to be Crook and Bayou Cafe. It's a Louisiana style food. Gumbo, po' boy sandwiches. Uh, Jambalaya. It's not going to be located around here. It's going to be up in Fowlerville, which is about an hour away, but we're getting ready to open one in Detroit, too. Oh, I want to be coming to that. Yeah, my, 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 buddy, who, my buddy, who the co owner is, he actually used to be a head chef down in New Orleans, and he cooks the best food. I mean, it's so good. True. So my grandma's from New Orleans. Yeah? How you heard. Oh, it, it's, it's good. It's good. Oh, oh okay. Well, it's right on, uh, it's up right on Grand River. Right, like right downtown. We'll be open next month. So you gotta let me know when you're coming. And I'll, I'll make sure that we take one downtown on Grand River. No, this is Grand River. runs all the way across the state. Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay, say if we do good, like... Um, Hold up, guys. She has a question. Say we do good, like, at night, and then we do... We start, like, we start at 10... Well, they don't look at, I mean, 
if you get into trouble, I mean, they can track all that outside of school, but in school? No, not trouble. I'm saying, like, what, what if I had good grades and then I just, like, started going down to some classes, but I come back up? Would they pay attention to the problem like when I went down? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to average your four years out. They're going to take your ninth grade through your twelfth grade year, and they're going to look at what you did in high school combined. And if you're really serious about it, I mean, there's teachers, there's counselors, there's people here to help you guys move towards that. And, and, and I encourage you guys to really do that, okay? One more thing I want to do, guys. I love doing this in every class. I'm going to need your help. Okay. I'm going to have everybody come up here to the front with your certificate. We're going to take a classroom picture. Okay? Come on up. Grab your certificate.